Hi, I'm Wesley DeVore. I am the product marketing manager for Personas, and I recorded and mixed the River City session with Molly Taylor and Denton Hatcher. I've been tinning far around this town for two. When Molly and Denton showed up to the River City session to do their recording, uh, we realized immediately there had been a slight miscommunication about instrumentation. Um, we had thought they were coming in to record vocals and guitar, and so we'd set up with the new IO Station 24C, hadn't even shipped yet, and I was super excited to uh, record with it because I hadn't had the opportunity, and that's one of the best parts about working at Personas is you get to play with all the gear. Uh, but when they showed up, Molly had her guitar and Denton had his banjo, and they said they'd work out a harmony too. So now instead of vocals and guitar, we were looking at two vocals, guitar, and banjo. And so while we were kind of working through all the mental gymnastics to figure out how to pull that off in the best way possible, uh, they did a run through. And their song had such this great kind of T-Bone Burnett 1930s country vibe that I thought it'd be fun to just try one pass with a couple of large diaphragm mics and just see what we got. So we used a PX1 on Molly's vocal and guitar, positioned a little closer to her vocal, um, which meant that the guitar was uh, more in the the bottom end of the pickup pattern, uh, which can sometimes make a guitar a little boomy, and it did, but um, that was something that was easily fixed with some uh, little EQ in Studio One. And then Denton I was actually more worried about because banjos are loud, and to use one microphone to pick up banjo and vocal, uh, I didn't think that was actually going to work. Uh, but Denton's a really good player, and he was really able to rein in the banjo a little bit as he played and sang, and he made my job a lot easier. So we listened back to the playback, it worked, so we kept it. Um, in Studio One, I used the Fat Channel XT plugin on both Molly and Denton's uh, tracks. It's one of my favorite plugins because it's kind of this one-stop shop for all of your dynamics and EQing needs, right? So you got this, uh, you got a gate that can also be an expander. You have a compressor, you have an EQ, and it's all in one window. You can view it all at once or individually. You can bypass each stage. You can flip the um, EQ and compressor stage if you want. So it's a really handy plugin. Um, you can also expand it with the Fat Channel collection, and this uh, collection comes with all these state space models of classic analog compressors and EQs, and they sound great. And my favorite is the Brit Comp. I love this compressor. Uh, it's just like magic. You put it on, and oh, there's my sound. That's exactly what I wanted. And then um, for Molly, I also use the Alpine EQ on her track to kind of rein in a little bit of that boominess in her guitar. Unfortunately, that made her vocal a little more shrill than it actually is. She's got this really pure, natural voice, and I really wanted to bring that out, and so I routed her track to its own bus, added another compressor and the Pro EQ, and the only purpose of that effects chain was just to um, bring back a little bit of the richness and warmth to Molly's vo voice, and keep that separation between her voice and guitar and it worked great. Uh, with Denton, I had a little different problem. So we recorded this River City session the day before Molly and Denton got married and Denton kept leaning over and singing to her when they were harmonizing and it was so charming on camera and it made set for such a great video. Unfortunately, it meant that his voice was in his microphone and hers which caused a little bit of a phasing issue. Um, this is where Studio One's uh, input stage in the mixer really came in handy. I was able to flip the polarity and uh, that fixed some of that. Uh, but there was also a level imbalance because every time he sang, of course he's being picked up in two tracks, so he's twice as loud as he needs to be. Um, and this is where I use Studio One's lane automation. Um, in Studio One, you can either view all of your automation parameters on one track or you can just view one automation parameter over the audio, and I love this, especially for these kind of repetitive um, automation tasks like I was doing here, because every time Denton came in, I had to lower his voice by about three, three and a half dB. And I was just able to go through the audio and do it really quickly, and it really sped along the mixing uh, tasks. Um, I used um, an analog delay as a send effect for both tracks, and then patched that uh, end to its own bus where I inserted a reverb. This is one of my favorite ways of working with reverbs and delays, each on their own independent bus. I find you really have a lot more control over the wet-dry balance that way. 
Um, going into the banjo solo, I ramped up the sin level a little bit. Sometimes when you have really tight harmonies and acoustic instruments and the uh, vocals drop out, the instrument mix suddenly sounds really thin and by boosting that sin level just a little bit, it fattens up the mix and kind of puts the meat back into it. And that's about it. A little limiter on the main bus and got yourself a record. So if you like these River City sessions and these follow-up behind-the-scenes videos, we do them about every month, so like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll also find a ton of great tutorials with Gregor and Joe on how to use Studio One and mix and produce, and it's a lot of fun and we'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching.